Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to go over 10 mid-game goals that you can set yourself that will help you make a ton of money once you reach them. These will all be around level 40 to 60 and will provide a decent money maker at that level. Alright, let's get started. So coming in at number 1 is achieving level 60 Herblore. Now the best way to make money with Herblore is by creating unfinished potions. Now at lower levels there are good potions to make as well, but setting yourself a goal of around 60 Herblore will allow you to unlock most of the profitable potions to make. Some of the most profitable potions are the Cadentine Potion, the Avento Potion, the Renar Potion, and some of the higher level herbs provide good money as well, but level 60 is a fairly good level to get to for this method. If you want to go check an up-to-date profit calculator, there's one on GE Tracker, or you can go have a look at the wiki as well. Coming in at number 2 is creating Mahogany Planks through the hot air balloon transportation system. Now this will require the completion of Enlightened Journey and 50 fire making. A pretty easy goal to go for, 50 fire making will really not take that long at all. After completing the Enlightened Journey quest, you can unlock one of the uh, transportation systems that drops you off right beside the sawmill. And if you use this to make mahogany planks, you can get upwards of 600k an hour for a fairly easy requirement to achieve. Some other things you're going to want is weight reducing equipment, so graceful will be extremely useful, a ring of dueling, and you will need also some cash to begin with because it does cost money to create the planks. Now the one drawback from here is you are not going to get any experience, but getting 50 fire making will not take more than a couple hours, and that's going to give you 600k an hour, which is pretty good for that level. Now coming in at number 3 is getting 50 range for the magic shortbow. Now having the magic shortbow is good for uh, many different reasons. But one thing you can do with it is go to Revenants and kill low-level revs with the Magic Shortbow. I've been doing this a bit on my Slayer Only account, and I've seen a lot of people there with Magic Shortbows killing the Revenant Imp, the Revenant Goblin, and the Revenant Pyrefiend. Now the drop rates on the lower-level Revenants is lower, but you still get items pretty frequently. If you saw one of my episodes of a Slayer Only Ironman, I got like three drops by killing Revenant Imps in about 80 kills. And the drop rate on the Pyre Fiend and the Goblin is much higher. Now the amount of money that you can make here varies quite a bit, obviously. But level 50 range is a pretty low requirement. You're not going to be risking much because you just need to bring Magic Short Bow, um, some Green Dragon Hide, and maybe a few potions or healing items. Also, if you keep your combat level low enough, you will avoid the majority of PKers. If you're under 50 combat, you will be able to not be attacked by most of the higher level PKers and some of the lower level ones as well, to be honest. If I was making a new account and was shooting for some mid-level goals, I would definitely try this out. Coming in at number 4 is achieving level 44 runecrafting. Now, a lot of people will know what this is for, but it's a good goal to go for because when you get 44 runecrafting, you can create nature runes through the abyss is the most effective way to do it. Crafting nature runes can earn you about 400k to 600k an hour depending on your efficiency and if you don't die at all, which is not super likely. Once you get to level 91 rune crafting, it doubles in profit because you can make double nature runes, but your profit per hour will go up a little bit as you unlock the other pouches so you can get the small pouch, the medium pouch, the large pouch, which will allow you to bring more pure essence per hour and, and, and thus increasing your profit per hour. While 44 rune crafting is very low, it does take a lot longer to get rune crafting levels, but still you'll be able to get this fairly quickly. And if you use this as your main money making method, you will slowly level up your rune crafting level as well. So maybe eventually you'll get those double nats. Now coming in at number 5 is probably one of the most lucrative mid-level money making methods you can unlock. And you get this by unlocking around level 60 farming. Now you will need a fair bit of money for this, but the higher farming level you get, the higher level potted plants you can create. Because when people are farming, they don't want to waste time letting uh, their potted plants grow. They will buy them off the ground exchange for a pretty significant margin. Now it's very useful to have the Lunar Diplomacy quest completed. However, it's not necessary at all. The profit per hour here can vary so much based on what you're making, but I've gotten 2 mil an hour before creating potted plants. It's also a very simple process. You just have to buy the seed off the ground exchange, use a gardening trowel and plant it into a filled plant pot. After that, you need to water it with a watering can, or you can use the humidify spell off the Lunar Spellbook. And then you have to wait about five minutes for it to grow in your bank. However, you're constantly making these, so it's not really a big deal. You're just going to really have to wait about five minutes at the end for the rest of them to mature into full plants. After that, you simply sell them on the Grand Exchange, sometimes for a four, five, six K margin per plant. It's pretty click intensive, but absolutely worth doing, considering the farming requirement is really not that high. Now, coming in at number six is getting the requirement to spam out uh, medium clue scrolls. 
If you don't know, you can open Eclectic Imp Lanes, which do contain about a 1 in 25 chance of getting a medium blue scroll. Now, once you get about 50 Hunter, uh, 50 Construction, and a 50, 60, 70 Magic, and you've unlocked some of the uh, medium or high level teleports, you'll be able to complete a ton of medium clue scrolls per hour. At higher levels, you can complete about 20 to 25 clue scrolls an hour. At uh, mid-level, you can probably get about 10 to 15. Now, the majority of your profit from completing medium clue scrolls is from the Ranger Boots, which currently cost about 36 mil. Now, this is somewhat of a complex method because there's a ton of different things you need to do. You need to fill out the medium clue stashes. You need to set up a bank tab properly to have all the teleports, uh, jewelry, or anything else you might need to get to all of these locations. And you'll need all of the precursor items for the clues to begin with. Now, this kind of deserves its own video in itself. And to be honest, I'm not a pro at doing clue scrolls. But this is something that a few people have mentioned to me, so I thought I would include it in the video. And maybe I'll make a separate one on it later when I have a little more experience with it. Coming in at number 7 is unlocking the Kingdom of Miscellanea through completing the quest Throne of Miscellanea. This is one of the easiest ways to earn passive money in old school RuneScape and requires very little checking in on it. However, you will need a fair bit of startup cash. So once you've completed the Throne of Miscellanea, you can put money into a coffer and start your kingdom working on gathering different resources. Now it does change a bit on how you should set up your Throne of Miscellanea. However, if you check on the wiki, you can see what is generally the most profitable to go for. Now it's very important that you keep the max amount of cash in your coffer at all time. They are going to take a percentage of your money up to a cap. So really the easiest way is just to keep it maxed out as much as you can. Now there are kind of technicalities where you can have less in there and still get the maximum output. If you are short on cash, you can have a look at the um, you can have a look at the kingdom wiki to get all the specifics. Currently the best thing to have your kingdom set up on is fishing, uh, mining, herbs, or hardwoods. On now the profit here is going to vary quite a bit. But it's great for Ironman and it's just great in general for anybody who wants to get some passive income. Next up, coming in at number 8, is completing the Varrock Diary. The Varrock Diary is, again, amazing for having a passive income. If you complete the Easy Diary, you're getting 20k a day. The Medium Diary, you're getting about 45k a day. The Hard Diary, you're getting 90k a day. And the Elite Diary, you're getting about 180k per day. This is by collecting your daily battle staves from Zav shop and it's very important to get this done as soon as you can because the older your account is the more profit you're losing out on coming in at number nine is getting to level 50 smithing now level 50 smithing you can smith mithril bars and the best way to do this is through the blast furnace now it's pretty important that you have the coal bag as well so you will actually need to do the mother load mine to unlock that but once you have it by smithing mithril bars through the blast furnace you can make about 600k an hour sometimes more you can also smith steel bars for profit, which can vary a bit, but currently it seems about 500k to 700k an hour, depending on the margins on the items. And once you get up to higher smithing levels, you can smith adamant and even rune. And the XP per hour by smithing the bars is very good as well. Now it would be kind of recommended to get 60 smithing because at that point you will not have to pay to enter the blast furnace. But it's not a necessity, it's only a convenience. And this is probably one of the easiest and most common mid-level moneymakers to work towards because it's easy, profitable, and pretty good experience. Coming in at number 10 is completing the Lunar Diplomacy quest for the Lunar Spellbook. The Lunar Spellbook has a bunch of potential money making methods for magic. It has the Humidify spell, which I just made a video on of me making close to a mil an hour, 900k to 1 mil an hour. It has the Spin Flax spell, which is occasionally profitable, but a ton of crafting experience as well. And there's also the Tan Leather spell, which is a higher level spell to be fair, but the amount of magic experience and profit you can get is quite good. Honestly, it's probably the best spellbook for making money with magic. Since magic is historically expensive, anytime you're getting magic experience and profit at the same time, it's twice as good as normal magic methods, really. Anyway, guys, that is about it. Those are 10 mid-level goals that will make you a lot of profit once you reach them. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a video like, and I will see you next time.